Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Just want to give you some helpful hints to ministry. You know, I'm 52 now, Old Testament. Once you reach 50, you were supposed to help the younger ministers keep the charge. But we all learn from each other. Amen. I learn from people all the time, every day, really. Okay, so helpful hints in ministry. I'm going to start out with 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. I taught this as a church recently, the great Pentecostals of Columbus, Georgia, Pastor and Sister Batten there. It says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So I, I've got myself a note on here. Read First and Second Timothy, Titus, believe and obey them. You know, that's to ministry. Verse 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Sounds like the day we're living in, doesn't it? They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So before we begin to exegete this passage, I did want to just give some things. I've been in ministry since I was 19 years old, or put it another way, I've been in ministry 33 years, and it has not gone like I had planned it, not in the least. I mean... I, who know? I thought I'd been pastor in a mega church by now, and here I am. So, Brother Paul Mooney always says, "Never plan your life because if you do, you'll always under plan," and that is true. You can't find anyone in Scripture who ever planned their life. God had to do it. Now, you might say, "Well, Jesus planned his life as God." Yeah, but you're not God. <laughs> Joseph didn't get to be on the throne because he planned it. It was because it was ordained of God. David didn't get on the throne because he planned it. It was because he had a dynamic relationship with God and God raised him up. Moses didn't deliver the people at 80 when he tried at 40 because he planned it that way. God planned it. So let God plan your life. Now, the single greatest piece of advice I ever got in the ministry was from my pastor, Brother Sam Ladd, a wonderful missionary to uh, Africa. And this was his bit of advice. He said, never be surprised about anything. And that has served me so well. I have people come up to me and say, Pastor, you need to sit down. This is going to shock you. I'm like, doubt it. You know, try me. I've never been surprised about anything in the marriage. Uh, excuse me, in the ministry. In marriage either. But no, in ministry, I've never been surprised about anything because my pastor prepared for you for that. So you hear some of the goofiest stuff. People have some of the most horrific moral failings and stuff. I was pre-prepared for it. You need to be people, you know, it's like that old uh, picture you see and it says, now remember, as far as anybody knows, we're just a normal family, you know, and uh, you find that so many Christians are that way. So never be surprised about anything. Another great piece of advice I received from our recently departed Bishop B.S. Cole, Benny Cole, longtime superintendent of the state of Georgia, is he said this, and he said this often, love God and love people, and always love God more than people. No doubt about it. If you love people more than you love God, you'll turn into Saul who tried to please the people instead of pleasing God. If you love God more than people, you'll be David. All right, so always love God more than people. Love God, love people. Love God more than people. The greatest books on ministry I can remember that I've read were A Tale of Three Kings by Gene Edwards and In His Steps by Charles Sheldon. There are dozens more that are excellent and transformative. Remember that uh, Paul told Timothy, give attendance to reading. Now, I've got a young man in our church right now. I, I hope he's reading the Bible as much as he's reading everything else. Give attendance to reading. He needs to remember to read the Scriptures. Amen. But uh, two of the greatest books on ministry I can ever remember reading was A Tale of Three Kings, Awesome by Gene Edwards, and In His Steps by Charles Sheldon. Whenever I've been around great people, great men, I've always tried to pray the prayer, let me get all their best qualities. Uh, one of the greatest revelations one can get is to realize how little they know. Remember Paul said, 1 Corinthians 8, If any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. Man, 
compared to the knowledge of the world and individuals and God, I know nothing and I'm learning. Uh, what was it Emerson said? Every man is my superior in some way and in that I learn of him. All right. Proverbs 18.6 says, A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So some people say, well, that's referring to bribes. You know, you give gifts and it'll get you into positions of influence. Maybe so, but also your gift will make room for you. you promotion cometh not from the east or the west or the south. Promotion cometh from the Lord. He raises up one, puts down another. I'm writing myself that note of uh, Psalm 75, verses 5 through 7 right there. And I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stop right there. We may pick up with this again another time. Some helpful hints in ministry. God bless. I'll talk with you later in Jesus' name.